Erotic Awakening is presented by Nothasaur. Nothasaur is a specialized toy manufacturer that produces a variety of sexual pleasure items based on magical myths and cartoon styles to satisfy people's different sexual preferences and needs. Each of their toys is handcrafted. Nothasaur takes pride in design and produces premium quality products. They also offer multiple choices of color and firmness in order to produce unique fantasy toys for you. If you are looking for a truly unique fantasy and myth based dildo penis sheath butt plug cock ring masturbators grinder and more you'll find it at nothasaur.com this week on erotic awakening bottom sub slave and take down and capture welcome to erotic awakening an exploration of all things erotic if you are offended by adult topics or prohibited by law we recommend you stop listening right now we want to thank our latest patron supporters charity vicky dreaming rain and jody welcome everybody head over to patreon.com slash erotic awakening today and get your bonus content and support the show hi dan hi don today on the podcast we recently were presenting a power exchange class at apex which is the space here in the phoenix arizona where we are currently at and and it is one that's been running for, I don't know, like 20 years or something at this point, yeah, if not pretty, longer. It's pretty ancient. And we had the opportunity to teach one of our power exchange classes. And one of the cl- questions we were asked, we're going to talk about tonight on the podcast. And that is, somebody asked, how do I transition from bottom to sub to slave? Right. And the first thing that we had to do was to mention that our definition for bottom, and it changes from person to person or whatever, right? Our definition of bottom is actually someone that is physically receiving something. And I say physically, it could be mentally or hypnotically or things like that. But the person that is receiving something in a scene, Mm -hmm. right? Not necessarily i mean i don't see bottom as part of power exchange dynamic at all so it's like bottom a receiver in the scene submissive there's power exchange involved Mm -hmm. whether it's in a scene or in a lifestyle or in a relationship and then to me slave is part of a power exchange dynamic i kind of agree with you and i kind of don't i think if we go to slave as somebody who is living in a power exchange dynamic, absolutely agree with that. Mm-hmm. I think bottom can include power exchange as part of a scene. Hmm. See, and I separate the two, and and I I can be swayed mm-hmm. to see it the other way. When I think of certain people and the way that they seen. They want no power exchange whatsoever. They mm-hmm. just want the skill done to them. They want yeah. to be spanked. They want to be flogged. They want to be a needle bottom, whatever it is. And it's just the skill of the scene bottom. But once I, let's say it's me, once I start to submit in that scene, if there's any power exchange, if they try to start doming me, then I would do sub in that okay so let me so let me run this by you then Uh you are doing some pickup play okay and the pickup play that you've decided on is that that person is going to come in and grab you by the hair and make you strip for them and make you kiss their feet and make you suck their cock Mm -hmm. and then they're going to beat you Mm -hmm. with a flogger Mm mm-hmm Are you bottoming to that scene or are you a submissive in that scene? I am bottoming in the scene as a submissive. Right. But the submissive in that role, in that reality. Well, thank you for joining the podcast where we're (laughs) teaching you anything. We're just going to discuss it amongst ourselves. Um, I think that you could be a you could take a submissive role in that particular scene but you're still just bottoming you're not a submissive in that scene you're you're playing at being a submissive perhaps but you're just bottoming and the bottoming the scene that you're doing is a scene that includes a mental aspect that includes being dominated i can kind of see that except i have a little resistance of if i am submitting in that scene I am being submissive. I am being a sub 
in that scene. Ah, and that's where we get to the fun part. I think that's where we're getting yeah. to where sub can be a couple of different things. Right. Are right? you being submissive versus are you a submissive? Yes. Is it an action or a, I don't know, lifestyle choice? Right. So is it an action or a role? Yes. Or a, yes. Yeah. Oh, I like a that. relationship role. Not mm -hmm. just a like a not like role play, right. but a relationship role. So that's where it gets kind of funny when I hear people talk about submission, because it could be submission in a scene mm -hmm. as a bottom, or submission in a relationship as a role right. in the dynamic. We're in a we're in a dom sub relationship. Right. So two ways of talking about that. Right. Yeah. So. Now no, I was so I, I was going to ask unless you've got the same question. So how do you go from being a bottom to a submissive? Well, I and that yeah, I was going to address this. First off, the way that the question was presented to us was that it would be a progression. Mm -hmm. And in truth, it's not a necessary progression. Some people are bottoms, period. Right. They like to go to the BDSM club and get spanked or get beat. And that's as far as they want to go with it. They have no desire to submit to it. We know anything. a lot of people like that, right? A absolutely. absolutely. When we think of a lifestyle as a, a submissive lifestyler, for lack of a better term, it is somebody who says, I want to go ahead and be involved in a power exchange relationship, but I don't. And that's what, you know, here we get into these definitions that aren't really valid because everybody's allowed to define this stuff for themselves, right? How do you define the word submissive? How do you define the word slave? Exactly. So, well, and we know someone that was Jack Rinella. Mm -hmm. He created a dictionary for all of these words. And he said he's still got cases of them in his basement because nobody wanted a dictionary. <laughs> because they do define these things, you know, on their own. So the other thing that I wanted to point out is that, and we did this when we were at Apex, I pointed out that it doesn't necessarily need to be a progression. Yeah, absolutely. If you're submissive, you're submissive. If you're a bottom, you're a bottom. And it doesn't necessarily mean that everybody's working towards being the slave, right? I had no end goal of being a slave. It just happened to happen over time that that's just what we organically fell into and then looked backwards and went, when the hell did that switch? You know, when, when, when did that change? How did that happen? So not everybody even has that goal to go from bottom to sub to slave. And some people go forward and decide they don't like it and then go back. Mm -hmm. And one is not better than the other. Right. That's one of the main things to, to keep in mind. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, let's say that you you actually do. Mm -hmm. You are comfortably being a submissive. If, let's just say someone came up to you and said, Don, I'm, I'm, I'm a submissive right now, but I'd like to become a slave. What's the path? Well, what I would suggest to them, first thing I would ask is, what does submissive mean to you? What do you mean you're submissive? Why mm -hmm. do you define yourself that way? And what does slave mean to you? What definition are you using? What is it that you're looking for, wanting to feel, wanting to accomplish to become a slave? You know, what does that exactly mean? Try to get those definitions pinned down. For me, being a submissive meant that I still had internal questions. Mm -hmm. Sometimes not even internal. Sometimes they were external, right, as we worked on things. But I would have questions in my head like, oh, crap, Dan just gave me an order. Am I comfortable with that order? Am I okay with that order? Is that what we agreed upon? Is that in the contract? Is it something new? Should I question him about it? Is there any doubt? Does he have my best interest at heart? You know, I would have all of those questions when we first got started. Once I was okay with my answers with those questions, then I would perform the action. Mm -hmm. Right. As a slave, what happened over time was I built so much faith and trust, you know, trust and faith in you, our relationship, our dynamic, what we were creating, the validity of it, the whatever, you know, that I just started obeying. I didn't have those questions in my head. Those voices disappeared. And then I was just obeying. And then I realized that I would obey, and then if I had questions, they would come up later, and I would bring them up with you. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it shifted from 
working through doubt and working through process and working through those things to just automatically obeying. So that's what I would work with with them is I would, if they were still a submissive because they had doubts and mm -hmm. questions, I would work on their confidence in their themselves, their master, and their relationship. And that's how they would organically go into slave. Sure. I think I think that's fantastic advice. Gosh, I, I thought I think you just wrapped it up right there. We're done. <laughs> Let's turn the recorder off. Let's go home. Oh wait, we are home already. <laughs> we are home. So, you know, do you have anything that, that as a master you would throw in there that you think would need to be covered no i love i was mentoring I, someone I, I love the idea that you're starting off with well, what what do those terms mean to you and if you know it i think a lot of people perceive it as uh, the term slave is just a deeper level of surrender mm. and i'm not opposed to that definition i i certainly see that there's other options of course as well in that in leather culture, slave is, an, is a title that to be earned. Mm -hmm. Now, in general, I'm more of a fan of a slave as a title to be earned by the service that you do to your leader. But also, you know, don't get overly attached to the terms. I think that it can be valuable to say, I have a goal of feeling that I am truly a slave. Mm -hmm. But as we've, we've said a couple of times now, don't get stuck in going around all these events or hanging out with these other people and say, oh, my, I guess I'm, I've been a submissive for two years. I guess I better graduate into being a slave or some silliness like that. Yeah, no, not everybody has that same end goal, and that is perfectly fine. We're, we're not all supposed to have the same, you know, the same end goal in mind. I, I think... Um, Next week, let's do top to dom to master. Okay. So we can do that. We can talk a little bit about that. I wonder if it's the same kind of journey. but I, You know, it's not, though. It, and I'm, I'm not going to do a spoiler right now, but for a little foreshadowing, there's some differences. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a little blurrier when it's bottom sub slave, maybe. Yep. Absolutely. So, and yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Cool. If well, you don't want to wait until next week. To find the answer, you can just ask us in person. Oh, yes. We will be at EV in Phoenix in November, actually this Sunday. Um, EIK in St. Louis in November. Kink School Online in November. Naughty Revival in Minnesota in December. Apex in Phoenix in December. Cure in Columbus in January. I think we're going to be at Apex in January as well. We will see how that turns out. Intrigue in Indy in February. And June, we will be in Tulsa. Keep up with all our events, book news, discounts, and more via the Erotic Awakening newsletter. And get your EA shout out like Jennifer. In Minnesota. Head over to eroticawakening.com and subscribe today. Indeed. So, Don, Nothasar is currently having their Black Friday sale. Nothasar is a sponsor of the Erotic Awakening podcast. Now, you and I already have the Grayman. We do. And the Allah. Yes. Um, but what we do yeah. not have, and I'm looking specifically because we have a, the Black Friday sale is coming up. Look at those dildos. Yeah, I'm actually. Um, that? That's the one I was looking at, the Ean, Ooh. or it's spelled E-I-N. And that um, is a, well, let me actually see. Um, holy cow, look at the sizes you can get that in. Apparently, Ooh. this is a. Is it like a unicorn horn? I think it is like a unicorn horn. And I really like that they have these little stories about. Yeah, you can go read a story about your toy. Yes, yes. So, um, Ian responded by thrusting forward with the unique shape of its horn brought immense it satisfaction. And it's purple. And yeah. look at the sizes. It goes from little itty bitty. Yes. To humongous. Yeah, really interesting that they actually have, instead of just, you know, oh, I've got, I get this dildo, there's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven different sizes. And it really, it breaks down. This is the size of the head, the shaft, and the base. And, and all there's different. firmness you can, you can order as well. And there's firmness well. as well. Yeah. Yep. So feel free to head over to nothosar.com and check out the Friday Black Sale. The Black Sale or the Black, is it a, what is Friday it? Black, it's a Black, black Friday, Friday Sale. sale. Wow, okay, I was like, are all the toys Black? No, Do they have a. They have all. <laughs> <No>. <laughs>
awesome. So you know what? It's November, isn't it? Yeah. We isn't that crazy? Think, we got to think about our Black Friday sale, too. I usually put the cards on sale. So people will have to keep a lookout for that on. I'll do a surprise. I thought letter. you were going to say, it's Friday. It's almost Christmas time. Let's go no, shop dildos. I don't do Christmas. I'll do Black Friday dildo sale, though. That will be awesome. So, Don, <laughs> you and I have had the opportunity a couple times to do, like, these takedown and capture kinds of scenes. We have. But not to the extent that we've seen many of them. Now, that is true. We have seen some great capture scenes and takedown scenes. But but I am going to argue just I'm going to give some pushback <laughs> on that. We did do that, but which? Yes. The witch scene. What did we call that? It's in our book, Sex Stories and Power Exchange. The witch hunt. Yes. Yes, where I did get to run through the dungeon and get captured and tackled and taken down. and But that came years after some of the takedown scenes we've done. You know, it's really <laughs> funny if you think about it. The first couple of years mm -hmm. when we were playing in public dungeons, every year we would do a takedown scene. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like a, it wasn't really a takedown and capture. It wasn't like I chased you through the dungeon mm -hmm. or anything. But I would do something, and for a while, it, I was starting to have to really be creative, <laughs> where I would be knocking you from a standing position to a to flat on your back. And that's what we mean by takedown, right? In Taking this case, yes. Down to the mats. Yes. yes. You, this kind of fed into your fear play. It fed yes. into the power exchange aspect. Well, it fed into the power exchange because I was not allowed to fight back, mm -hmm. right? So you would do a takedown scene. I would want to fight back. I'm not allowed to fight back. And that is part of that power exchange that I cannot fight back. Mm -hmm. Very fucking hot, right? Very fucking hot. Yep. I had someone else try to do a takedown scene with me, and he's like, why didn't you fight back? I'm like, oh, was I supposed to? <laughs> I'm not used to fighting back. I'm used to having to take it, which, yeah. is, which is hot. <laughs> now, a lot of people we do see, they do fight back. Now, the, 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 the ones that always come to my mind are the, the scenes at Twisted Trist, mm -hmm. where you're signing up for being hunted and captured. The hunt. And yes. to see, you know, four or five people carrying this this screaming, struggling person between them mm -hmm. down the down the road to places to go do naughty things to them. And people have signed up for this. It's not like random. People yes. have just been <laughs> captured, right? People sign up to be captured. But also at like sacred sexuality events, and I'm trying to think of the one that used to happen in southern Indiana. I mean, you would, uh, it was like a, a Bacchus ritual, a Dionysian, yes, yes. a Dionysian ritual, mm -hmm. where you would sign up for the hunt, and you would have hunters, and right. you know the people that signed up for the hunt to be hunted. I mean, we're, we're, we're prey, right? So we're running into the woods and trying to hide from the hunters, and you know, get drugged back once we're captured. And mm. so, what's what is, what's the <laughs> about that? Because the point of it is to get. To have a scene anyway, mm -hmm. isn't it easier just to walk up to the cross and lean there and wait for somebody to show up with the flogger? Yeah, but there's something about being hunted, mm -hmm. right? There's something about being hunted. There's there, there's fear involved. And like you said, I, I have a thing with fear play. I like fear play. I like d the desire that's involved because if somebody is hunting you, mm -hmm. they desire to capture you. So there's something with that desire. Okay. There's something with the magnetism of it, the animalistic nature of it, the primal nature of it. I mean, all of that just strikes a lot of chords. It's very sexy. And and the people doing the hunting, I, I feel their dominance and mm. their their self confidence in being able to track something and yeah. capture it and <sighs> I, I, you, wonderful description <laughs> I will say now that I as I am getting to be a person who I'm trying to avoid saying older but I'll just <laughs> say that my desire to go charging through the woods to find somebody and then once I've grabbed them and wrestled them down to the ground. It's like, all right, now uh, give me 20 minutes. So I'm going to sit here and catch my breath. <laughs> I was thinking of that with the, even the mats, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I am older now and I have to watch out for the knees and the ankles. And we do know someone that broke their foot 
Yes. With doing this thing. I mean, there, there's things that can happen. Oh, yeah. This is very dangerous. Yes. Right? <laughs> know your risk profile when you do this. For me and you, I can see us maybe starting on our knees and grappling. Yeah. Take it's, down that way. <laughs> it, it's funny to think that with all the toys that we play with, be it needles and floggers and staplers. And whips. And, and whips and all that. And... and the thing you end up getting hurt was, oh, I pulled a hammy. <laughs> be a part of the Erotic Winging Podcast community. You can support us on Patreon and get early access to the ad-free version of the podcast, a free version of the audiobook polyamory toolkit, free ebooks, discounts on monthly Zoom classes, member-only Discord access, and more. Find all the goodies at patreon.com slash eroticawakening today. Help others find us. Take a moment to support the podcast. Rate us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Or just tell your friends. Join the conversation with us and other listeners. Use the links from the Erotic Awakening website for our growing Discord channel. Feel free to reach out to us. We love talking to you. Contact us with questions, podcast comments, or just to say hi. We are Dan and Dawn on FetLife and Erotic Awakening on Instagram. Or just email us at Dan and Dawn at eroticawakening.com. Bye, Dan. Bye, Dawn. <laughs>